Okay guys, this is for Elena Pavlisadova's group and I'm just going to go over um, the problem on your exam review. Um, it looks like 18 on your exam review, so that's topic concept 7.3. It's going to look like a YouTube, okay, of glucose and sucrose and you've got water in there too. So, basically your problem goes such that um, you're going to have a YouTube like this, okay. And then you're going to have a semi-permeable membrane at the bottom, okay? And it, you, it's only permeable to water, which is pretty tiny, right? So H2O can get through. And then it's also uh, permeable to glucose molecules. They're small enough to get through that membrane. But sucrose is not. So sucrose is not going to be able to go through the membrane. So whatever sucrose you start out with is going to stay on either side of that membrane, where it can. Okay. So water can go back and forth, right? And your smaller, uh, your smaller saccharide glucose can go back and forth. But sucrose has to stay on both sides because it's the membrane that here is not permeable to sucrose. All right. Um, so the way you want to think about this is when you think about um, the glucose going back and forth, it's called diffusion of the solute. Okay. So any diffusion going on is of the solute. And any osmosis going on is of the water. Okay. Okay. So for your particular problem on here, this isn't going to be the same on the test, but you are going to have one of these. I saw your exam, you're sure for sure have one of these. So check in your book for a different example or online if you want to take an example. Um, so you're going to have one of these, it's not going to be exactly this one. You start your problem right with two molar sucrose on the left over here. Let's make this A and this B. And then you've also got one um, mole of, where are you? One more solution of glucose, okay? So you've got two M um, of sucrose, one M um, glucose, the tiny one that can get through. And I believe it's flipped on the opposite side. Yeah, it's exactly flipped on the opposite side. We've got one M um, of sucrose over here, which is bigger, you can't do it. And then two of the movable, because it can permeate through, um, tiny glucose. Okay? Okay. So what's going to happen? Look at all your options. It asks you in 18. After the system reaches equilibrium, so this is your first point, and then there's a time variance. Remember, something can happen over time. Um, after the system reaches equilibrium, what changes are you going to observe? And the answer is going to be the water level flow is going to be higher on side A than it is on side B. So first, let's say you're right here, okay? At the start of the problem, over time, you're gonna be more like that, okay? And think about the reason this is very simple if you think about that. Um, just realize that the bigger mouth is not gonna be able to get through the water, through osmosis, and the um, small saccharide through fusion are going to be able to get through, all right? Um, she may ask you a question about whether the solution, and remember the solution, okay? Remember we're talking about tonicity, we're also talking about the solution, the cells or the solution that um, the solute is in. So she may ask you a question about whether it's hypertonic, isotonic, or hypertonic, right? Um, now I was trying to think about plant cells. If you don't water your plants, they're gonna fall over, right? Because they use that um, water in their system to keep them upright, okay? Because animal cells, human cells, we like to be isotonic, all right? Um, but plant cells don't want that. They want to be able to have enough water in the nuclear vent themselves to stay upright, right? All right? Um, yeah, so for 18, your answer on your exam review is going to be A. The water level is going to be higher than 